With the launch of Lost Sands earlier today, Rare offered us a chance to choose how the story progresses this time, with the community deciding the fate of the beloved Golden Sands outpost. You have two choices, the right choice or the wrong choice. The right choice is choosing to destroy Golden Sands, and I'll tell you exactly why this is the case in terms of lore, gameplay and logic. So let's get on with it. When choosing the side of the Servant of the Flame, you're tasked with picking up a new type of rowboat, a Soul Flame rowboat, which contains lots of supplies, a cannon and a keg on the back. Head over to Twin Groves and speak to the Reaper Smuggler and pick up a Relic Cache. Then sail to Cannon Cove to deliver it. Finally, sail over to Golden Sands and detonate your rowboat. Sounds straightforward, right? It's much more engaging than the alternative. Head to Cannon Cove and Smuggler's Bay, dig up some merchant goods and sail back. That's it. There are zero explosions involved in this. Think how monotonous that is. This should be enough to convince you already. If I haven't convinced you, here's the law reasons. The Servant has an axe to grind with the trading companies and is absolutely right how they infect the Sea of Thieves. When the Pirate Lord himself found the Sea of Thieves, he envisioned it to be a pirate paradise, away from the trading companies outside the Shroud and outside of the oppressive mega company, the Grand Maritime Union. And for a time, it was. The Sea of Thieves is a wild frontier, full of mysteries and magic, a place of freedom, until the Pirate Lord failed to protect it. He was betrayed by his own crewmate, Rathbone, who would warp into the Gold Hoarder, creating one of the greediest and most exploitative companies we see now. The Gold Hoarder's mode of operation is simple. Each of their representatives has keys to the chests found across the Sea of Thieves. They will sell you a map, not give you one, asking you to risk other crews, the undead, sirens, ocean crawlers, and sea monsters for something that may or may not be there. Once you retrieve it, you have to return to the outpost to get paid for it, and even then, you get a small cut of what's inside the chest, while the gold hoarders hold the rest, and then they pass the gold on to a man who's consumed by greed already. A skeleton lord who has access to more wealth than you'll ever make in your life, even sailing forever on the Sea of Thieves. You're getting a raw deal with this one, doing all the hard work to fill the vaults of a corrupt man, whose soul left him long ago. The gold hoarder sided with the brethren for a chest of gold, showing he knows no loyalty and almost brought an end to all of our pirate lives. And let's not forget the Order of Souls. The Order will sell you, again, not give you, a map to take down a cursed crew. You cut down captains who are living in death, as is their right on the Sea of Thieves, to return their skulls for pittance. The Order will pay you for your deeds, but they hoard something more valuable. The secrets contained in the skull they keep are extracted. Locations to trinkets, objects of great power and treasure, all hidden away from the people who deserve it the most. Knowledge is a commodity on the Sea of Thieves and is not to be locked away, even the Pirate Lord understood that. They even caused the cursing of the servant himself, sent him on a path to obtain a cursed chest of great power, only to send another crew after they became impatient. This was all orchestrated by the captain, inadvertently creating their biggest enemy, and their rightful downfall. They even won over Sir Arthur Pendragon, a valiant man corrupted by the Order. He was tasked with destroying skeletons because the Order coveted their secrets and hated them for what they were. The Merchant Alliance are no different. They get rich off the back of pirates' hard work and draw the Grand Maritime Union's eye to the Sea of Thieves. They will place orders with raiding crews who attack Grand Maritime Union ships. While a mighty endeavour, this brings us under threat with each attack. The Merchant Alliance are cutting into the profits of a force they simply cannot defeat and don't want to, as if the Grand Maritime Union ceased to exist, where do their profits go? Every crate, every piece of cargo and every commodity is shifted, shipped and sold to their benefit, not yours. They're gating away luxury goods and essentials for the bottom line, denying those who deserve them from taking them. Having a monopoly over resources is not a good thing. And then we turn our attention to the worst of them all, Athena's Fortune, an exclusive company that will only deal with those who are deemed worthy, those who fit the Pirate Lord's requirements. While he will accept the true pirates from the Reaper's bones, he will encourage you to work with the other corrupt companies to gain his favour, something he sided against long ago. The Pirate Lord claims to defend the way of life pirates hold so dearly but has allowed it to be destroyed decades ago. He was meant to protect the seas and ensure everyone remains free. In his complacency, the Sea of Thieves' original purpose has been eroded. The jumped up pirate lord decided we should all dance to his tune, not even two years into his adventures. All for what? So we don't take what's ours? Or is it so we can ask permission for a slice of the glory? The Reaper's Bones can offer this. It can offer what the trading companies claim to provide. The servant pays well for the chests, the secrets in the skulls, and the supplies. He doesn't shortchange us and doesn't do it to make a profit. The Reapers can share the secrets of the seas, for Captain Flameheart has the knowledge of a thousand scholars. You can have your immortality if you strive for it. 
You can have your riches vast, you just need to take it. And the only rule is, there are no rules. We need a king, not a lord. One who can protect the Sea of Thieves from those who have destroyed it and threatened to destroy it. And we can only do this if we destroy Golden Sands and vanquish the trading companies from beyond the Shroud. Finally, the biggest argument people use to save Golden Sands is that they don't want to lose an outpost. Who said anything about losing it? Do you think it will remain dormant forever? Not a chance. Why return to the old ways and invalidate the last five months of story only to return to comfort? Where's your moxie? Where's your pirate spirit? Like the ancients who inhabited the Sea of Thieves, these things made them soft when it mattered the most. We still have six other outposts. We have the most important outpost and the only one you need, the Reaper's Hideout. Now, I urge you all to take the Soul Flame rowboats, detonate them at Golden Sands, destroy Merrick's cargo, bring it to the Servant, and stop them from rebuilding. You can do this for the next two weeks, and I hope to see you all in the Shores of Plenty, as you can vote as many times as you want. And if you want to hear more about the wrong side, head over to Captain Blubber's channel to see the other side of the argument. Choose change. Destroy Golden Sands.